Okay, thank you for coming to my talk. My name is Namyeong. I'm going to talk about the data type profiling and current progress and future uh, plans and ideas and how we want to make better use of this type information. So quick status updates. Uh, since last LPC, we have merged uh, the full features I initially proposed for the data type profiling. And 6.10 is the first edition that has the data type profiling support, but I strongly encourage you to use the latest version, which will be 6.12, since it has much more improvements and some bug fixes. So I'm not uh, go through the details about the data type, how to use this information and how to do you uh, data type profiling, but essentially it's just uh, adding a new sort keys to the perp report. So by using just this type sort key with dash s option, you can use a data type profiling uh, given that you already uh, recorded uh, the profile with correct inf uh, event information. So essentially type is the to list uh, the name of the data type you access this, and type of is type name plus offset, which is the name of the field inside the type. And perp annotate, I added the dash dash data type option to list all the fields in the data type with uh, access profile information. So this is just basic uh, way of using the data type access profiling. But uh, we want to improve the perp tools to use this information more useful way. So one obvious uh, place to add is perp mem command, which deals with the memory access information. So I added dash capital T option to enable type information, but it's just short for the, the using the mentioned uh, sort keys, like type and data source and snoop and TLB access like that. So it will enable type uh, level memory access uh, profile. So in this example, you can see we have uh, four type, but first one is unknown, which means you don't have enough uh, dwarf information or, or the, the function or that instruction doesn't have enough uh, full information to, to analyze uh, data type from that instruction. Second one is tag operation, which means it's a push or pop instruction to put your data into the stack and get from the stack. And, and the next one is the actual data. And I focused on the data uh, task struct. And it got 78 samples. And you, if you, it, in this hierarchy mode, you expand to a next level of access. And then it will show the seven of Seven of them is from the RAM, and 48 is from L1 cache, and so on and so on. So I think this kind of information is, is the hierarchy mode is much more useful than the regular uh, flat uh, report mode. And next one is perp C2C command, which means, uh, which is focused on uh, cache, le cache line level access analysis with focus on the, the hit modified status, especially for remote node for catching uh, force sharing. It has various output fields and sort keys. I think the output is too barbarous, but anyway, it, it's, it's useful for some times and it shows the memory road and store information together. So I added uh, type CLN, which is short for the type cache line, as a new sort key, which will show the, which will aggregate the access in a data, uh, in a cache line together, which means offset zero <coughs> from 63 will go to the cache line 
zero and offset <coughs> sorry offset 64 to, to uh, 127 will go to the cash line one and so on so this will make the cash line level a memory access profile more uh, concise and, and easy to read. So I plan to do it with uh, perp C to C, but I actually don't have a, a concrete plan how to integrate it into the perp C to C level, but yeah, that will be my future work. But this is the general sort key, so you can use it to the perp mem or even just perp regular perp report as well. So thinking about the use case of the data type profiling, I think essentially we want to help developers to optimize their data structure layouts, which means we need to put related data structure in the same cache line to make better use of the cache lines. So we need to figure out which uh, fields in a data type is related and accessed uh, together, but sometimes it may not be intuitive from the source code, but with this information, we can help to figure out which is which data fields are related and needs to be put together. So Arnold, I talked with Arnaldo about this topic, and he suggested to, to analyze the example with the uh, basic block it belongs to. Then it will give another uh, memory access in the same block. And we will have a sample, and it tells you which data fields in this block is, is accessed together. Then it will help you to optimize your data structures to, to put these fields uh, information. And another thing is about the, the temporal locality information. So we may want to know what, uh, if this field is accessed and how long it will be accessed again. And this kind of information is sometimes useful. We don't have a good um, uh, way to visualize this information in the PURP tool, but maybe we can add a new uh, output mode to, to like time chart style. Uh, output to to show the field of accesses uh, with the sample time step information. Sorry, what field level? What, what field, uh, field means in the in the uh, uh, member of the your data structure. Okay. Hello. Yes, in your previous slide, you suggested a visualization that you were calling field level time chart. Can you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I need to clarify the terms. So here, time means your data structure, like a task struct or MM struct, thing like that. And field means uh, the member of that type, like a, a task struct has P, T, or yeah. things like that. That is the field I yes. managed. Yeah. And thinking about further, if we have this uh, information, maybe we can hint other tools to do the actual better uh, layout. Maybe we can add support to the perp tool itself to, to suggest some uh, layout changes, or we can use uh, PA hole. Uh, as far as I know, PA hole already suggests something to pack uh, your data structure to remove some paddings inside the uh, struct. But with this information, maybe it can suggest this and this field is uh, accessed together. So you need, uh, you better put them together in your, in a, in a cache line. Or we can maybe hint compiler to uh, generate code to uh, change the layout if we have this freedom to, to do that. Uh, like we have a randomized data structure option in the kernel. Maybe something like 
that with the data type information, you can you can uh, suggest the changes. So. Uh in the kernel, you have already ways for you to say that uh, some fields are related, like adding compiler attributes like uh, cache line align on SMP. So you, that's, so, some of this work was done already for lots of data structures. For networking, people did more recently like cache line groups. You, you, you group together, and then there is some validation. Uh, uh, and PA Hole has a reorganization algorithm that tries back together, but it's naive because it, it moves uh, just based on alignment holes and moves things together. But then you, you, you don't get the cache effects that we are wanting. So with this information that gets from, from what we have in data type profiling, plus uh, the extra work that we have been discussing about finding related fields, we can fit this to PA Hole and then improve its reorganization algorithm so that it takes this into account, takes the compiler groups that the networking people did into account, takes the uh, alignment that this uh, is there as well, as well, and tries to, to reorganize things. And then you can re uh, uh, produce a compilable new definition for the structure, and rebuild, and then profile again. So that, that would be like data type profile based uh, optimization, like similar to PGO, so kind of like that. That's the idea that I have been discussing. Yeah, thank you. So besides that, we have uh, some issues with this, uh, how to, uh, with using data type profiling. First one is availability of the dwarf debug information. Sometimes we uh, might not have uh, full debug information because the binary size is too big. We have a lot, uh, like, like a, have a big static linked binary. And in this case, uh, it's not possible for some uh, resource reasons not possible to have the full dwarf information. In that case, how can we uh, deal with that? Is my idea is, um, in that case, they ha might have uh, line number information and list. Then we record the line number information for later, and then ask compiler to give some type information in that line or something. It's very easy to have multiple dereference, up to 10 or something, in a single line of code. It is, it's, I don't think this is granular enough. Um, better compiler tools like DL, VM, DBook Info for profiling, I think that really is the way to go. I mean, if you know you want to do this, build with a tool chain that supports it. Mm -hmm. It's really that simple. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. We can do that, but just just with the line number information. Maybe we need some more information, like a column number or some discriminator or something. But I'm not sure. Yeah. So another option is to use BTF for the kernels. So BTF is more available than Dwarf. We can probably use BTF to to get some type of information. And another way is maybe rather than uh, creating dwarf information in, in the binary itself. Maybe we can have another option to dump all the type information for its instruction during the compilation. I'm not sure it's, it's, it's possible, but that will be another option. Or perp tools can generate uh, type information regardless of samples. And then mm, we'll, we can save it to a file and then later we import that file to, to match samples with type information. So um, I think that the currently uh, BTF is uh, uh, based on the dwarf. So that uh, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, user will have uh, the dwarf information, dwarf file, or something like that. So that uh, you can use that anyway, isn't it? Uh, I will talk about the BTF in the next slide, so 
Okay. I can, I can talk about that. So I'm from compiler group. So uh, we can use something called discriminators to differentiate mm -hmm. line uh, yeah, yeah. in addition to line numbers. So we use a lot in the auto FDU. Yeah. So do you think it's possible to record line number plus discriminator and later ask compiler to uh, describe its access? Discriminator is like a 32-bit uh, integer. You can have your encod uh, encodings. Yes. Like, uh, but we are considering expand this to a larger group. Well, well, I'm not sure if the current line number table has discriminator for uh, Dwarf have this. OK. Yeah. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> OK, so yeah, that's the one issue. And another one is the quality of the Dwarf debug information. I found sometimes it lacks uh, location expression at all, but sometimes it doesn't match the instruction with the actual location expression is, is like general uh, problem with the dwarf quality. And, but uh, the more important problem is that uh, dwarf only generates the variables. Uh, um, I mean, I mean debug, debug information for variables. So if you have an access without variable, so dwarf doesn't generate anything. Fortunately, uh, LLVM recently has uh, uh, an option. Uh, I don't think it's uh, added recently, but they had a feature to generate more debug information without explicit uh, variables in that case. Yeah, yeah, yeah some shooter uh, kind of variables. And with uh, all that, sometimes it it needs to go uh, instruction tracking, I called, to figure out the actual data type because of the issues in the dwarf quality of the location expressions. I tried my best to, to figure out the correct data type, but it might have some <laughs> bugs, so I encourage you to test and report anything you find uh, something weird. And yeah, that's it. And oops. yeah, regarding the, the BTF, as mentioned, the uh, BTF is generated from Dwarf. So it has the basically uh, similar information than Dwarf. But uh, basically BTF, as far as I know, doesn't have location expression. So you cannot simply match uh, this location to a variable or something. So you need to go to the instruction tracking, starting with the uh, uh, initial uh, type information and pass it to, to locations as instruction goes. So BTF, we have a function parameter information and per CP variables. Function parameters are usually located by the uh, calling conventions, but I, I have, I remember yesterday's talk, some compiler optimization, unfortunately, uh, put it in a different way. So sometimes it misses, but I guess that's, uh, that's the rare cases. But anyway, we can start with the function parameter by the calling conventions. And another showed me there's a, a patch to support global variables in, in BTF. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that would be helpful to, to figure out time uh, information. But still, we, ha we don't have uh, local variables and, and location <laughs> expressions. But yeah, it's still limited, but I think it's... it's but th there was an idea that we discussed on uh, LSF MM, I think, about uh, <laughs> memory that comes from slab cache that we could somehow try to identify. Did you do, oh, yeah, do yeah, some yeah. work on that? Uh, yeah, yeah, last meal. I suggested that, uh, yeah, but it's it's a different use case. It's okay. for the lock contention. Ah, sure, tree. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the slab cache doesn't have type information. It just shows uh, the name of the slab cache. It doesn't match to the ty actual types. So. Uh, 
There's ongoing work by Case Cook that eventually slab might have type A formation, but not not yet. But we might get there. Oh, you will add the type information to this. Yeah, yes. yeah oh, but it means nice. like a very right of all K malloc uh, call sites. Hopefully, with mm -hmm. some automatic script to the new format that uh, mm -hmm. passes the type to okay, it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Will they will I, uh, add the PTF type ID or something there? No, it's from from a uh, type in whatever the thing you have uh, uh, in the. Oh, okay. Code. I will take a look later. Thank you. Question. Oh. Um, so on, on this slide, there are a few things, right? So the, you run into cases where, say, dwarf does not have location expression. So maybe we treat that as a bug, right? But coming maybe, to yeah. no local variable support, so is the overall intention to go more towards dwarf or to, or maybe, you know, we figure out there is a, we figure out a way to get dwarf more crisp. But the other way of you know going forward is getting this information into BTF. So what is, which one are we picking? Are we picking the way where we put more of this information into BTF? So no local variable support and the cases where you say you need um, location. Yeah. Is the intention to bring this into BTF? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, but. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, it's nice to have, but yeah. I'm not sure they will allow. It will bloat at the PTF size a lot, I think. Yes. Because I think not if sure. you look at the cases why Dwarf is bloated, it is because of these cases of you know location information, call sites, recover the original value of arguments at each point in the program. So if we are getting there, I think maybe we you know, sort of take a step back and see which is the best format to support the use cases here. Okay, thank you. Um, it almost sounds like we need a dwarf light. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, the, 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 the reason for BTF is to be compact, to be always available. So, but, not, but then people want to go uh, per CPU variables and then it entered there. So, so the, all the things that are coming not from Dwarf, but coming from all the parts of the server, all the sources of information. So, uh, but there are other ways of using Dwarf without having to install the whole big thing. You have the bug info servers. You can ask for just that specific object file. So that, that, uh, we are trying to explore the, these kinds of things in, in, in tooling and, and, and GDB and, and, and perf, et cetera. So instead of requiring users to install this big debug info package, we, we, we can automatically try to bring those to the local cache and things. So it's a combination of things. Uh, BTF is always available. So we should try to first try to use it for uh, like function uh, signatures, the types or global variables, for per CPU variables, for what it's there. And then uh, you, you, we could, the tool could say, oh, but if you want more, then enable the debugging for server or install the, or use a binary with, with dwarf information. So you use all, what's available. By the way, BTF is not always there because it could be turned off. I turn it off all yeah, the time yeah, yeah. Uh, because it's bloated. It takes the compiler. It does right, do right, a lot right. of work. It makes the compiler go longer. So no, I do actually turn it off. And there's on system. And then you have systems that are like memory constrained where it is actually a lot. And I'm a little bit worried about all like adding so, more to BTF because it is getting big. But when we finish, maybe BTF needs to have basically <coughs> options. So so yeah, I mean the 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 idea of, is. For instance, for BTF, it's uh, for extra information to be on a separate module. Like, let's say, instead of uh, you have the base thing uh, and, and you have something that extra that you would load, and then you're going to get this information. It doesn't have to use kernel memory. You could use just it from from the file system. There, there, are, there are ideas in that direction. 
uh, and and for building the kernel, there was talks here about not using PHOLE to convert from Dwarf to, to uh, but for the compiler to generate the VM Linux, the BTF information directly. So it speeds up. So the, 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 all those things are, are being uh, discussed in several different forums, dif different groups, trying to uh, get the best of this and remove the, the bad parts about the, having a dwarf generator as an intermediate step. So, yeah. Okay. So this is a good reason why we have kernel developers at GNU Caldrum. So we need to go back to GNU Caldrum. More of you guys need to go to GNU Caldrum, and also we need to start interacting more with the... Yeah. yeah. And, I, yeah. and I think with this, the time is over for... Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's my uh, last slide. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.